I think the Lord just wants to minister to you. He doesn't always use man. <laughs> the Lord can minister to you one-on-one -on -one in the secret place just by you spending time with him. You feel that? Man, that is a truth. You have no need that any man teach you. But, the, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. That Holy Spirit will teach you. That fresh oil will teach you. And he might use man. He might use somebody else. He might even use a donkey to speak to you. You know, it's, it's biblical. <laughs> but you have your own relationship with God. The foolish virgins wanted the oil from the wise virgins. And they said, no, go, get, go pay the price and spend your own time with him. Go purchase eye sol for your eyes so you can see him. How is that? How do you purchase that? Surrender. There's nothing we can do. What does a profit a man so that he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? You need to give your soul to God so he can renew it in the spirit of your mind. The mind is the soul. Get renewed in the spirit of your soul, you know? <laughs> Get renewed in the spirit of your mind by ever beholding him and pursuing him with a pureness of heart. Pursuing God. It's like, I already got God. Yeah, well, how, doesn't the Bible say draw near to God, he'll draw near to you, even if you're already born again? <laughs> you know, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added to you. Seek the king of heaven. You know, all things are yours, but all those things are in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. You got to get to know him through worship. And in, I mean, the Father is seeking worshipers who will worship him in spirit and truth so he can flood them with spirit and truth. So that the more you're filled with truth, the more you're filled with His Spirit, the more you can comprehend His voice. So that you're not tossed to and fro by every wind and wave of doctrine, all the lies and the hypocrisy and all the, the people just trying to manipulate you. You'll know His voice by His Spirit. So I'm laying there, I get up, I run down, and then, phew, no, like it's just the Lord ministering to you. You, sometimes you just need to be still and know that he's God. You don't always have to go to a pastor. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. You don't have to go to this city or that city. You know, because the Lord is just looking for someone who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's in the Holy Spirit and in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit. The Father sent Jesus Christ. So that we can get to know the Father. There's no other way back to the Father but through Jesus Christ. And we get to know Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no other way. <laughs> you know, every other way is a thief and a robber. It's not knowledge. Because there's been knowledge on the earth for 2,000 years. Revelation knowledge through intimacy, through words revealed by the Father himself speaking to us. That's how we live. Our bread is to do his will. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Not just proceeded. We don't live by memorizing the King James Bible because the Pharisees can memorize the scriptures and they don't have eternal life because eternal life is the person who's taken over your body, soul, and spirit and living through you. It's not saying a sinner's prayer. That may be a starting place. It's just giving all your sin to him and you take his righteousness and walking in that righteousness. If we live in the spirit, okay, good. Let's walk in the Spirit now. In our day-to-day -day life. When you wash the dishes, wash them in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the fastest way to wash the dishes in peace is to wash them while you're praying in tongues, you know? <laughs> wash them in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> do your chores in the Holy Ghost. Everything you do, He's there with you. Hallelujah, man. So, the next day, you know, the Lord's ministering one day. The next day we would get up and we go to this... Uh, building where this other prophet is. They're like, they want it, this guy to minister to us. And then I'm with this, he's like the Pharisee of Pharisees. And I was a second in command Pharisee at this time, you know? We have a badge of Phariseeism. We would run by people and condemn them, tell them, oh, you're going to hell, you know? <laughs> Don't even know if they're born again or not. We're just clueless, working in the flesh, holding up, you know, like those people on the streets holding up your sign, repent, sinner, God hates you, you know? <laughs> It's totally Satan himself coming through us. You know, we need to allow only the Holy Spirit to come through the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he'll burn up all that mixed seed the more you spend time with the consuming fire. Through surrender worship and getting revelatory by spending time pursuing him and meditating on the word. 
What did he say to Joshua? This book, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on, on, meditate, meditate on it day and night. These two are these phylacteries, these scriptures on their forehead as an outward show of what they're supposed to be doing in the spirit. <laughs> you're supposed to be meditating on the word of God through every season of your life. If you're watching a movie on Netflix, you're looking for what, 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 could, be, <laughs> what could God be saying here? That's what I used to do when I'd sit in the movie theaters. I'd get blasted. God would speak to me in, through everything. Secular songs, the Bible, pastors, you know, nature, <laughs> audible voice in worship. You're always just looking for his voice. You're the voice of your lover because the voice of another we will not follow. We're only going to follow the word of God, John chapter 10. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he came to give us life and life more abundantly. That life is his life pouring through us as we surrender our, life, our lives to him. Zoe life, John 10, 10. <laughs> and so we show up in this place and this prophet's standing there and my Pharisee of Pharisees friends, who's probably delivered by now, I don't know, I have no idea. I haven't talked to him in years, but he's, he's there. He doesn't take courtesy falls. He'll rebuke you if you try to push him over, <laughs> which is good. We don't need that. We don't need to fake it until we make it. Let's just make this real as possible and raw as possible. So he's standing there and I saw him crumpled to the ground. Wow, I've never seen him crumpled to the ground. And he wasn't crying. He was laughing in the joy of the Lord with a tangible presence coming off of him. <laughs> Face is just red because he, don't forget to breathe, you know. <laughs> Breathing from another dimension, I see. <laughs> and he's just laughing. And later on, he, as he's laughing, the spirit hits me and I go into a vision. And I saw there was this doorway. You know, Jesus is the door, right? Nobody else comes through, you know, the door but through him. I saw this doorway and underneath this doorway, there was like this little gap. And there's this little puddle about maybe the size of my, this, this thing on my shirt. Very shallow, maybe this shallow. Very, very shallow puddle. And I can... I sense God speaking to me. That shadow, I mean that 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 shallow puddle. God says to me, "That's how much you've ever tasted of me, Chris. Just that shallow little puddle there." And I could see behind the door, but I couldn't see. I could sense that behind this door was an infinite ocean of the God realm. It you could not measure the depths. You could not measure the width. I knew that this water was, it, it, it was alive. It, it, it had peace in it. It had, uh, everything that was in there was alive. There was nothing dead in there. It was pure ecstasy, pure bliss, pure life, pure God. The washing water of his word. Not boring logos, like just trying to try do everything in your own flesh. It's the logos becoming rhema. Not a dead letter, a living letter full of electricity from the Father, from Father God, the bread that we feast upon. And I was so frustrated. I was so excited and thrilled to see what's behind that door. And I said to God, how do I open that door? Because I cannot open it. I want the whole, I want the whole ocean of his love. This is all I've tasted? I mean, I've experienced the prophetic anointing where it feels like you're just walking through the sun and it's fire in your bones. You know, prophetic experiences, demons manifesting on me, tell, condemning me, telling me I'm going to hell. You know, just these, these third heaven prophetic encounters with the living God. But that's all I've tasted of him. Just a shallow little puddle. Just glimpses into heaven. Just glimpses of his presence. You know, we hear, we, look at that, three, three, three. We feel the presence of God on the earth. But if you're to compare that, I mean, you feel the warmth of the sun, right? You feel the heat, you're on a nice summer hot day, and ah, oh, sometimes it even gets a little bit too hot. You gotta take some shelter because the sun is too hot. And it's like thousands of miles away. And you're like, man, it's so hot out here today. It's a little bit too much. That's kind of similar in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a symbolic way of just like, wow, I feel the presence of God. The glory is so thick you can't get off the floor. But that's just the shallow waters, Chris. 
That's all you ever tasted of me. But I thought I couldn't get off the floor. And my friend, he's, who stutters, is speaking like he's at an auction. But yeah, Chris, that's all you've ever tasted of me. It's very shallow. What do you mean it's very shallow? Very shallow, Chris. There's so much more behind that door. If you go through that door, it's an infinite ocean of glory, an infinite ocean of love, an infinite ocean of peace, an infinite ocean of joy, an infinite ocean. You cannot measure the depth, the width, the breadth, or anything. It surpasses all understanding. It surpasses your feelers. It's life more abundantly. And I'm like, God, how do I open that door? And he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. He just said, Chris, you have the keys of the kingdom. Worship. Second key, revelation. Release that revelation. And then one day he revealed the key to me. Do you want to know what it is? Do you want to know what it is to open that door and go through and experience the living God without measure? I was in a meeting again in worship. And I went into a vision and I saw it. There's that door again. I was like, you know what, God? I'm so hungry for you. I'm going through that door. And I just, I went through by faith. I went through the door and I saw the key that was spinning there. It was faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I couldn't see what's past that door, but I, I, I had to, I needed him more than my own life. And I went through the door. And I began to walk with God. I began to go through him and enter these realms of glory where the, I'm sitting with the Father in heaven. And unconditional love is pouring through me and I can see the earth below and I can see my failures, but I can see him who's the answer to my failures. I can walk with the Holy Spirit in the realms of glory. And he reveals to me what the scriptures actually mean. I can see Jesus in a mirror saying, Chris, you are my body. And I want to use my body to go hug that broken person in there. It became real. It's not just about feeling his presence, it's about releasing his presence to the broken. Where you just become a living temple, releasing the life of God as you surrendered in worship and release the revelation of what God is like. I remember kneeling on a chair, I'm supposed to preach in a street church. God sent me there. And I'm like, God, how am I supposed to reveal you? You're infinite. I was just broken. Just broken. Just a, just, how can anybody, just little specks of dust, reveal the living God to these people? Not in your own strength, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. For men, it's impossible, but all things are possible to those who believe. And when you believe, you have faith to step through the door and let the door come through you. I stand at the door and knock so he can come in. But when he's still standing at the door and knocking so he can come through and flood the earth with his peace, his love, his joy, his revel, who he is. A rock is a revelation. Jesus, he's going to build his church upon this rock. It was the revelation of Jesus being the Christ. David killed Goliath with a rock. You want to break bondage? Get to know the rock. Release the rock. The scriptures and Proverbs say, if you roll a boulder on others, it will roll back on you. You reap what you sow. So if you're going to release stones, you're going to stone someone, you better be the rock of Christ. <laughs> it better be the glory. It better be the anointing. It better be the person. But everything is done in the motive of love. Not out of anger and rage of a religious demon, but in love and of peace of God. God is love. And even yet, even as you get to know him in these a little bit deeper in these realms, maybe the puddle got a little bit bigger, didn't it? It's still just a puddle. I'm not like the cherubim, the seraphim who are in heaven in constant. They're like, holy. One time I was in worship and I just saw when I was when I would 
the more I would surrender my heart to Jesus, the more my eyes would open to see what he's actually doing in heaven. Every time you say holy, your eyes open more. And you see what he's actually doing. He's pouring his spirit about on everyone in heaven. And the more your eyes open, which is your heart, pure in heart, see God, the more your eyes open wider, the more you can comprehend and see how much glory he's pouring out. And the more you can see is the more you can receive. And the more you can receive is the more you can release. And the more you can release, the more others will be free. Hence, we go back to what God said to me. So many of my people are in bondage. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to worship God. I'm going to surrender everything to you so that all of you can come through me too. I'm going to receive revelation. I'm going to pursue you. I'm going to receive your voice and hear what you're saying. And I'm going to release what you're saying to your body. And the more I get to know the anointed one, the more his anointing comes through the temple of the Holy Ghost to break them free. So many of my people are bondage. What are you going to do about it? Paul and Silas. Or was it Barnabas? Paul and Silas were in a prison worshiping God. And the prison doors shook open so that the prisoners became free. What were they doing? Worship. Another, another time, Jesus was walking on the, on the water and or, or, there was a great storm. No, this time he was sleeping in the boat. And the disciples were like freaking out. Like, Jesus, there's a great storm here. What are you going to do about it? You know? We're going to die. Like, oh, you have little faith. Why little faith? <laughs> what do you mean? There's a huge storm, Jesus. Don't you see that? He's, he's resting on his pillow. You know, we got a resting place too. It's the anointed rock. Jacob's ladder is there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shaka. Whoa, shaka. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? You know what? And their relationship with Jesus... There were other little ships on the water during this storm. And he stands up and he says, Peace be still. And through the relationship of the disciples with Jesus, the other little ships receive the same peace and same calm through the disciples. Just by them knowing Jesus Christ and speaking face to face with him, even if they were in, in fear. That relationship, he'll calm every storm in our lives when we trust him. And sometimes he'll expect us to calm the storm in other people's lives. Like he asked me. So I'm telling you, put on a playlist. <laughs> Worship God. Get into the Word of God. Put on an audio Bible. I have tons of them on my YouTube channel. Or there's, you just type audio Bible. Google it. Download one. Holy Ghost. Get renewed in the spirit of your mind. Get washed in the washing water of his Word. He'll wash away all the serpent food. You know what the serpent food is, right? It's the dust. Dust shall you eat all the days of your life. You know, God cursed the serpent. He didn't curse man. He cursed the serpent. He said, dust shall you eat all the days of your life. It shall crawl on your belly. That means he's going to be on, on his belly, which is symbolic of like spirit. You know, <laughs> squirming through the earth realm looking for dust. And what happened to Adam's body when he fell? His body was made from the dust of the earth. So he fell into the flesh realm. And God said to the serpent, that's going to be your food, the fallen nature, sin. So the serpent feeds upon the sin nature, the fallen nature. And when we worship God in those living waters, we get renewed in the spirit of mind. That logos, washing water of the word, washes away that dust out of our gate so that the serpent has, Satan himself has nothing to feed on in us so we can say like Jesus the enemy comes but he has nothing in me why? because rivers of living water out of your innermost being out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water if there's only two requirements if you knew who was speaking to you and the gift of God if you knew Jesus Christ the word of God and the Holy Spirit all we got to do is speak to the rock those living waters will come forth. Just ask of Him. 
and he'll give you those living waters. The, just open the well of salvation in you. Uncap it. The stone has been rolled away, right? <laughs> Whoa, Shaka. So let those living waters pour through. <laughs> They'll pour through the tomb, pour through the crucified you. <laughs> let living waters come through. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is king, man. Oh, shuck. Oh, yeah, I guess I should make an announcement. I got my Radical Man channel back. Praise God. It was taken away from me for about a week. Oh, the demon hates these messages. Tries to shut it down. But you know what? God's the one who told me to share these things. <laughs> so you could be encouraged. And I'm not even a pastor. <laughs> I'm not an ordained minister. I'm... A, uh, I'm, I'm set apart by the Holy Ghost just to walk with God and if I can do it if I can walk in these realms of glory so can you <laughs> even if you're a pastor evangelist teacher pastor all of whatever those things are apostle prophet you know uh, all these things like are to bring the body into fullness what is the fullness of just walking in God the titles are just to equip the body. And it's not even about anybody having a title. You know what the title is? Because I, I thought I had a title and God said to me, you know, this is this is your title here. And I tried to you do everything in the natural realm. And it's like God just smacked me. Like, what are you doing, man? And then he showed me uh, Matthew chapter 10, the first seven verses in the King James Version. Seven is perfection. Or eight is new beginnings if you use a different translation. So it says the same thing. What is my calling, God? How do I do my calling? And Jesus called his disciples, called him, and Jesus, and Jesus called his disciples unto him. Seven is the number of perfection. You want perfection? Go to him. And he'll be the pastor through you. He'll be the evangelist through you. He'll be the teacher through you. He'll be the apostle through you. He'll be the, the prophet for you. And greater yet, I'll show you even a higher way. When you walk in love, he'll be loved through you. purpose of life is love and God is love it's not about anything else and everything else you can do in that realm of love and then it'll just it'll be pleasurable it won't be tedious it'll be fun <laughs> anyways I just wanted to share that these are the keys of the kingdom there's more keys but maybe I'll make another video after and share them but those are the two main keys the most important surrendered worship and logos rhema Get into the Word of God. And get to know Him. My friend, oh, I ran out of time. I was going to talk about what he said on this stream yesterday. He said, if you want to get to know God, you know you know the head, Jesus Christ, but you also need to get to know His body. <laughs> it was really powerful. I got hit by that. You want to get to know the fullness of God? Look at Him and look at His body. Hallelujah, because His body reflects Him. In Jesus' name, be blessed. <laughs>